you have to ask yourself, would you rather hope that hell is empty or would you rather sinners get what they deserve, including the ones you love the most? We're always asking, is hell empty or is it full? Some of this I'm, I'm going to get very personal with you. Like the Pope, I, I also hope that hell is empty, but I know that it isn't. But I hope that it is. I mean, God's mercy is infinitely great, but we are also infinitely stupid. If people wind up in hell, it's because of their choices. It's because they've moved outside of his reach by choosing against his grace, against his, his mercy and so on. I would like to believe hell is empty, and I would like to believe that God's mercy is so great that he could catch the souls of the people that I knew and love who died outside of grace. Hopefully, his mercy is so great that he can rescue even them. There's a friend I had. He was definitely an atheist. What kind of an atheist he was, I don't know. Was Did he really believe in God but just rejected him, or was it really a failure of his intellect to actually believe in God? But he died too young. And I always, you know, I had this horrible image in my head of the poor guy in, because we used to debate, like, you know, as friends, but they would, they would, so they were not official debates, but they were debates. Anyway, we'd debate about God and religion. And I had this horrible image in my head. I think this might have been a dream that I had, and it just stuck in my memory of him in hell now, trying to, looking up, sort of looking through a glass ceiling, which to me would be a glass floor looking up from hell in this glass ceiling and there's people all around him in torment and the flames and he's banging on the glass ceiling, admitting now that he was wrong and I was right. Not to make me feel good, but almost as if to say, okay, I was wrong. Ask God to save me now. Or, okay, I was wrong. And now maybe by admitting that, maybe God will save me. In this image, I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear him pounding on the, on the glass like it was too thick. or I couldn't hear anything. I could just read his lips, and I could see him pounding, pounding, pounding on that glass ceiling, or to me, the glass floor, pounding for dear life to get my attention and shouting his head off, you were right, you were right, I was wrong. God, I hope he's in heaven. He may not be. He may not be. Nice guy, but I would hardly call him virtuous enough for heaven. I mean, not not the least. Very nice guy. Not you know, not a malignant character or anything, but not virtuous. There are people I know and have loved, friends, family, who, by the books, by the books, if we go by theology, the likelihood of them being in hell is great. Great likelihood that they are in hell if we go by theology alone. I hope to God that they aren't. I hope hell is empty. I really hope. And all of you have similar experience, right? Where you know or are related to you know, people that you love who died, would you rather hope that hell is empty when you think of your relative who has passed away? Would you rather think that hell is empty? Or would you like to think that sinners get what they deserve? I'm going to pause and let you think about that for a second. I would rather think that hell is empty. But I know that it is not. I know that it is not. But I'd like to think that it is. I hope that it is. But I know that it is not. The people who I loved very dearly, who are dead and gone, I hope that God's mercy was great enough to reach them. Because I know there are a couple that come to mind specifically. I know that they had tremendous hearts. And I know that for at least one or two of them, it's possible that in that last moment, in their last moment before they shut their eyes forever, it's possible that one or two of them said, God have mercy on me. And it's possible that they never said anything like that, but that they might have had they had the presence of mind. And so it's possible that God knew that and said, if you had just a split second more, you would have asked for mercy. So I'm just going to give it to you. Damn, I hope that's true. You have to ask yourself, would you rather hope that hell is empty or would you rather sinners get what they deserve, including the ones you love the most? What does this have to do with focus and attention? Well, hell is real. Yes. Hell, <laughs> we cannot authoritatively say hell is not empty. But we, we don't have to pretend to be stupid either. Okay? Based on what we know from Scripture, from tradition, writings of the saints, hell is very likely not empty. It's just not. <laughs> it's just not. Okay? If Satan and the demons are there, certainly humans can be there. Right? It's just not empty. Are there a lot of people there? Probably. Saints have said so. Right? Saints have said so. Apparitions of the Holy Virgin have said so. Now, 
we can either choose to focus on that and be attentive to that, or we can focus and be attentive to something positive, God's mercy. It doesn't mean we ignore the truth of hell's existence and what it takes to get there. I mean, the, the catechism is very, very clear on this. This is You don't even have to be a philosopher or a theologian. Read the catechism. The catechism is very clear on this. Let, let me read this quick from, from, from the catechism. It talks about that hell is the state of definitive self-exclusion from communion with God and the blessed, reserved for those who refuse by their own free choice to believe and be converted from sin, even to the end of their lives. Catechism is very clear. Hell is real. People can actually go there. Yes, that's true. We don't have to ignore the truth, but let's focus on the positive, that God's mercy is real and true and infinitely deep and broad. And we can still, we can still wind up in hell because we can still reject it, uh, his mercy. We can still reject it by our choices. But I try to focus on, on the positive. You know, these people that I knew and loved, that by the theology, it's a high likelihood that they're in hell. And also by the theology, it's a possibility that they got to purgatory. However slim that possibility is. Hey, God made the world from nothing. Jesus Christ was incarnated in the womb of a virgin. You mean to tell me by a slim margin of God's mercy that he can't save someone? Come on. So I pray for their souls. I visit their graves. I offer rosaries for them. Or I can say they're probably in hell and just give up on them. Focus and attention. Focus and attention. Focus and attention. This is not the Boy Scouts. It's the military, this thing we call Catholic. Being a saint or being a scoundrel, what's the difference? It comes down to focus and attention. What has your focus has your attention. What has your attention has your heart. Is it taking you to someplace positive or is it taking you to someplace negative? 